Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I wanted to get on real quick and do a very short little video today about what I spent about an hour last night and about two to three hours this morning doing. Um, I did Kool-Aid dyeing. Here are my packets. My husband went and got them. I got, I told him, I said, just buy every flavor or color you can get your hands on in the store and um, I'm going to give it a shot. So he said, okay, and he went and got me some. Let me move, make sure I got my stuff in the center here. Let's back up a little bit. There we go. Um, I have, uh, let's see, what flavor is this one? Of course, I ripped the tops off, so I can't tell you what they are. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> There's cherry, grape. I know there's a lemonade, there's a raspberry, which looks very blue. It's not a blueberry, so it's a raspberry. Then there's an orange, there's a pink lemonade, a cherry, and a, I think this green one is a lemon lime. So I went on the internet and looked at several people's videos on how to do Kool-Aid dyeing. Um, I've done dyeing before with... Um, other dyes, but I dyed wool, not paper. So I thought maybe I better find out. And one of the things that I should have found out more about was how to put on rubber gloves while you dye so that your fingers don't look like you're a disgusting human being and don't wash your hands. <laughs> um, anyway, so I went on the internet and I was watching a couple uh, videos and I watched a video where they said to add baking soda to the water. So my first foray into Kool-Aid dyeing was with the green dye. I think that's the lemon-lime uh, flavor. And when I put my paper, let's see, I don't know if you can see the, can you see the colors? Um, when I put my uh, paper into the water where there was baking soda, what happened was it made this really funky, bubbly, fizzy stuff all over the paper. It, it's very textured. It feels like, for a lack of a better description, it feels like crocodile skin. You know how it, it seems bumpy? Very, it looks very bumpy. And this paper is very bumpy. I have, and I let it, I think I let it stay in the water a little too long because when I went to pick it up, um, it pulled it up. What I did was, is I um, took the packet of Kool-Aid that one right there and I poured the dry ingredients into a grab it bowl from Corning and mixed a little cold water in with it and stir it up put a little bit of baking soda in it and made some of the green fuzzy fizzy stuff um, and then I poured that into a sheet pan then I laid my paper in the sheet pan did one side picked it up and flipped it on the other I did have a sponge brush so you can see this look at that Looks very textury. I'd use a sponge brush to kind of make sure that I got good coverage on it. So this was the very first piece. I was confused by all the texture because the because when it laid in the water it was flat, and then when it lay there for a few minutes, the paper started to bubble up for lack of better terms. It started to get bumpy, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I've done something wrong." I think it was maybe from the baking soda. Only I'm not really sure. But I thought it was kind of weird, and it looks cool. So I'm not going to iron this piece. I'm going to leave it the way it is because I think it looks really neat. But not all of them turned out that like that. The next piece I put in was flat. If you can see the, let me, let me find, put you down. Can you see the texture in this? You probably uh, the color. I don't, very, I don't see the color very well on the camera. Um, see the difference in the texture? One is very smooth and no texture on it whatsoever. And the other one is just all bumpy and lovely. Um, so I, I think this was a combination of maybe the granules from the Kool-Aid not have been dissolved enough along with the baking soda in it that made it this lovely bumpy texture. And the other was after I stirred it up a few times and freaked out. <laughs> so I, this is more smooth. Um, so let me show you 
the uh, these are the only two that I, I these are the what a, a eight and a half by a, a fourteen inch eight eight and a half by fourteen inch paper. Then let me back you out. Okay, get ready. Here we go. Let's see if I can get us out far enough you can see it. All right, this is the stack of goodness that I spent hours doing last night and again this morning. Look at that. Isn't that... Isn't that cool? All right, so I'm going to start with the green, which was this pile here. And most of all, most all the pieces turned out the same once I stirred up the, um, the stuff. Most of them turned out to be pretty flat. There are a couple in here that are a little more crinkly than others, but I think it's because I took after I did the baking soda on, in the water, I noticed that there was a layer of white film on the sheet pan, and I decided that what has happened is that the Kool-Aid water separated from the baking soda, the Kool-Aid water absorbed into the paper, and then the baking soda left a like white filmy ghost on the sheet pan. In order to keep from ruining the sheet pan, I decided that I should lay down some foil. So I laid down foil on top of the sheet pan. And when I did that, I got things like looking like watermarks on it. It looks very cool. This, this one is really that way. So I started doing the sponging on it. And then, of course, they're a little more crinkly. Some are more crinkly than others. But here are all the papers that I got. I got done with the green. And I, I don't even know how many papers I did. I just did it until there was nothing left to absorb off the sheet pan that had all the color on it. So there's the batch of the lemon lime Kool-Aid. Um, you know, I didn't see on the packet. When I looked at the packet on how to mix this stuff, I don't remember where it said how much water to put in here. It says it makes two quarts, but I was looking at these and I don't see anything Oh, there it is. One cup of sugar and one cup of ripped off. One cup of sugar and one cup of ripped off. <laughs> I heard the instructions off of every bag. Oh, anyway, so I, I didn't mix evidently what it said to mix on here. You know, I just go and do it. <laughs> so there's, there's my stack of of lovely green papers from the first batch. That was last night. Then this morning I got up and I did more papers. These papers are from the beep 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 from the cherry Kool-Aid. And they turned out really red, kind of a red pinkish color. And this one is bumpy, so I think that the bumpiness comes from not dissolving the crystals in the water good enough for the first paper, and it bubbles. And that's no baking, no baking soda. I quit using it after the first time because it scared me about how it turned out. And if you could see it, there's like white flaky stuff that looks like shedding skin <laughs> on some of these papers. But some, you know, varying degrees of how long I left it sitting in the dye is the variation in the color. Like, this one was my first one and I got distracted and was doing something else. And look at the difference in the colors. It's the same dye. There's nothing different. It's just a, a matter of how long I left it in the liquid. So that's, I think, that first piece. Well, some of them are pretty dark and wrinkly. I did not get as many, did not do as many out of the red as I did the others. I think maybe I did not add enough water to get as many pieces of red paper out of that batch as I did the others. So you can see there's a big difference in the colors, right? In the color variations right there. We have light and then some dark. Okay, so that's the, the um, cherry. This one. <laughs> This one is the ras red raspberry, I think. Just the red raspberry. Uh, I think this, uh, well, it's supposed to have been blue. So yeah, this is the raspberry. 
and it's got pictures of blue on it so it's supposed to be blue and I I really like it looks like a robin's egg blue I don't know if you can see the color very well here but it looks like a, a lovely robin very light soft robin's egg blue except for these two <laughs> these two <laughs> well more like these four <laughs> these two these two right here. I don't know what happened. I must have ran to the bathroom real quick while they were in the oven. And um, <laughs> they look like Pop-Tarts. Like blueberry Pop-Tarts. They're very dark and crispy looking. Because <laughs> I think I left them in there too long. And here's two more. Where I was a little less distracted. But still just distracted enough that they look like they're toasted also too. <laughs> This one looks a little bit less, but I just love how the... I, I'm okay with the toasted look. I just, after that, I thought, you know what? I need to stop drinking water right now and pay attention to this because if I drink more water, I'll have to go to the bathroom and then the rest of my stuff is going to look toasted like these did too. So I quit drinking water after that. All right, the next ones are the grape ones. This is grape. And I love the grape. The shades of purple in this. Again, all very... Th oh, wait. These two sheets were the last of the blueberry or the raspberry stuff. So I mixed the purple, the grape, in with this. And I got great variations of blue and purple on it. I, I like the variations of the colors. It looks pretty good. I'm very happy with the way they turned out. So that's those two. And then the rest of them, you know, like I said, well, some of them ripped. Some boy left in the liquid just a little too long, getting something else out of the oven, putting something else in, and then picking up the paper and it ripped because it was too saturated. This is 65 pound uh, copy paper from, I think I got it from Office Depot. So you can see I left some of them in a little longer than others. So I got lots of different variations of the purple that I really... I wasn't expecting. Some of them have a bluish tint to them and a purple tint at the same time. I really like the way they turned out. I'm I'm very surprised that they turned out as well as they did. I like all the color variations. They, they look pretty cool. Except for the ones I toasted. Alright, the next one is... What's the next one? Oh, these, uh, these right here are the... Okay, I did the blue. I did the red. I've done the green. This is, what is this one? Oh, this is the orange. There's the orange one. And I'm kind of disappointed this wasn't more orange. They kind of turned out like, um, let's see, do I have a color in FW inks to relate that to? Okay, what's the color? They See, look at this color, look at that. This is called indigo or Indian yellow. In Indian yellow, yeah. Well, I kind of liken that to being a combination of orange and yellow. That's what this paper reminds me of. It's not very yellow, and it's not very orange either. It's kind of a oh, peach. Maybe that's what I'm thinking about. It's more of a peach color. I don't, I don't know. I, I the color is really nice. But it's not what I expected. I thought, you know, it would be like the inside of an orange. I mean, really orange. Again, I didn't measure water, so why am I surprised at my results? <laughs> um, so there's... I had I got more paper out of these because I, I think... And that maybe that's the reason why the orange is not more dark than what it is. Is because I probably added more water because I saw the red wasn't very much. From the cherry so I added more water and I think that's what probably diluted the orange color was putting a little too much water I just eyeballed everything you know when I have the attention span of a nap thing I'm not kidding <laughs> all right so the next ones are gonna surprise you because I certainly was surprised all right this is Pink lemonade. The first sheets I stuck in, it was like white, white and bumpy, 
there was no color. I don't think I left it in too long. Just kind of the dip in and out and away it went. And when it baked, I thought, oh, well, it's going to be a nice light pink. No, it's like, I don't know, it's like really weak tea white. It looks very weird. It doesn't look like any of the rest of the pa other papers. I don't know why. So here are the other ones. They're very, there's light pink ones, which I expected more, to, you know, that's more the result I had expected was variations of pink. And I got it. I got light pink, dark pinks, bumpy pink, smooth pink. Look at that one. I took this one and took the brush. After I had put this in the oven, I took it back out once it was dry and then took the wet brush and uh, I used one of those sponge sponge brushes and kind of raked it over the high points. And it did, you know, give it a little highlights. Give it a few, gave it a few highlights on the back. It looks pretty cool too on the back side. This one's done the same way where I brushed it on. Looks like a rash. <laughs> All right, there's that. Look at this one. This one's really dark. I like that. Then we have this one. These two where I let them really soak. They really soaked in and they look really dark. But they're not red. They're pink. A, a, it's an odd shade of pink. All right, then we have, I already did the purple. So this last group, I, I had a feeling was going to be an issue. So let me show you. Okay, here's the beginning. This is the yellow lemonade. So I did the first, first dippings and it was so pale. You couldn't even tell it had been dipped anything, so I dipped it a second time. And after looking at them, I didn't even bake them. This was looking at them wet. They looked really kind of sad. So I decided that I needed them to be yellow. I wanted them to be yellow. So after these first two sheets that I dipped two or three times and baked in the oven, I took yellow food color, you know, the one with the little four in the box, and I squirted about six or eight drops down into or onto the paper itself then splashed water well more lemonade over it and then I started getting darker tones that look like what I was expecting in the first place see they're getting darker as we go they look much better than if I had just left it in there with no food coloring whatsoever so this is a combination of um, food color and um, the lemonade color from the Kool-Aid. So here's all my paper goodness. I just decided that I, I really I really enjoyed making these, but I'm gonna really enjoy playing with them. And I doubt seriously I'm gonna be making any more of these for a while because that was a lot of standing up in one spot and dipping and doing the oven and bending over and Standing up and bending over and standing up and my the heels, my heels on my feet are starting to scream for mercy. But one more look. Look at that. Alright, for those of you who are musically paper inclined. I know sound is really important. Okay, so that's all I have for the moment. I have two projects that I'm going to do with this <coughs> stack of paper. And as soon as I can, then I will reveal the two projects. And hopefully this dye will be out of the cuticles of my fingers. I dug it out with toothpicks. I used a craft scrubby soap, hot water. My next thing is going to either be bleach or lemon juice or thyme. Anyway, so that's it for now. I just wanted to show you all this lovely color that I got from the Kool-Aid dyes. And I have to tell you, this one, real quick, the cherry, when I put it in the oven and it was kind of making a little smoke off of it, smelled just like a cherry pie. <laughs> it smelled really good. The rest of them had a little smell, but it was not nearly as good as the cherry ones. Okay, 
that's it for me for a couple days. I just want to let you guys know that I would love to make videos two or three days a week, but I have very, very slow internet. Um, and it took eight hours to download it, the first 27 minute squash book video I did. So my videos will have to be small, short, and in different parts. Like if I was going to do a project, now is where I'd say part one, part two, so on and so forth. I just can't download a video that's 45 minutes an hour process video because it'll take days and days to download it. And if we ever turn on any of our other devices, that slows it down even slower. So I think actually it's a donkey that's delivering the internet because it's so slow. So anyway, that's it for me for now. And I will be back in a few days to show you what I plan on doing with these papers. So that's it for me. Thanks, y'all. Bye.